Hey painting friends! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. Today we're going to do a painting tutorial of these cute little birds right here. These are one of my favorite birds, little chickadees, and they're in a snowy forest. I asked my friend Susie if I could borrow this photograph for a painting and she said yes! So I was excited to create this as a painting and then turn it into a tutorial. We're using acrylic paint. This is a canvas panel, uh, but you're welcome to use a stretched canvas as well. And now we're going to go through the materials and then get started with this painting. So stick around and we'll teach you how to paint this one. All right guys, for today's painting we're using acrylic paints. These are more of the budget-friendly acrylic paints that I have. I'm using Liquitex Basics brand and the Arteza brand. Uh, so our colors we have are yellow ochre, cadmium yellow pale, Indian yellow apparently. <laughs> this one is ultramarine blue, cadmium red light or medium. This one is sky blue violet. This one is burnt sienna. Burnt Umber, Sap Green, Violet, Prussian Green apparently, <laughs> Titanium White, and Black. And I say apparently because these two are Arteza paints that uh, in my oil paints and my other acrylics they are not that color. <laughs> Alright, for my paint brushes we're going to use the same brushes I used for my last tutorial which is a uh, 1 inch angled brush, a semi flat tipped brush, another flat tip brush that's a nice half inch size. This one's a little smaller. And then this guy right here is a round tipped brush. Pretty small size one. I also have a cup of water for rinsing off my brushes. I have some napkins or paper towels. And I'm just using parchment paper as my palette for today. Our canvas is 12 inches by 12 inches. This is just a thin canvas panel. And I've already painted on it before. I just painted over it with white so we can create something new. Okay, to get started with this painting, we're going to mix some white with some burnt sienna and some magenta and some ultramarine blue and a little more sienna and just kind of fill this in. Taking a little bit of burnt or raw umber there. I'm just doing like crisscrosses to get this basic shape all covered, get this whole canvas all covered with this color of paint. Take a little more sienna. You want to have it somewhat blended. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend. It can be a little choppy, but don't want to have like streaks of white or anything like that. You want to make sure you cover up all the white space on your canvas. Take some more of our raw umber and let's start to work that in down here a little bit. Take some white, some of that blue. Put that in up here. Keep covering all the white space on the canvas. And we're using mostly just pure white up here. You don't have to clean off your brush or anything. It'll kind of blend in, but it's a little bit lighter. Basically on this whole half of the canvas actually. And the larger brush you have here, the faster you can do this. So now I'm just going in and making sure I have a nice smooth transition, not too many brush marks visible. And while the paint is still wet, I'm going to start to do a little more blending here. So the paint's still wet. We're going to quickly work, take some more raw umber and our burnt sienna. Just start to add, let's do a little more sienna. It's like right in here. So basically this is our middle point in the upper half. Just start to blend a little bit more in there. Using that same brush, you can take some of your ultramarine blue and put that up at the top here. And then you can take 
some of the extra paint off your brush and get it on your napkin there. And then just use that drier brush to make a little better blend. You don't want to press too hard when you're blending. The softer you're touching the canvas, the softer your blend will be. And let's take some more sienna and just kind of put that in right here. Let's do a little sienna, umber, and red. Do some of that right there. We're just making a nice blurry background for our little scene we're gonna paint here. Take a little more of our umber. Good, a little more umber down here. And we could take some of our Prussian and black and some ultramarine blue. Just blend that in very gently. Don't want to press too hard or it's going to start to overpower everything. And a little more down here. Take some of our yellow ochre, a little umber, add a little bit right here. And you can start to kind of make the shapes of tree branches without things getting too detailed yet. So you have one that comes out and then they just kind of all come from that central point making more little branches. And you want to keep it nice and blurry, so you want to move quickly while, and kind of let the paint still blend into the other paint that's below it. Take a little more of our darker colors here, greens and blacks. Blend those, add a little white, a little more of our blue there. I'm still using this angled brush that I started out with. Take a little of that violet color and some more ultramarine, a little bit of the umber. Add some more in here. And take some sap green and some sienna. Add some up back here. A little more sap green and ultramarine. So the key here is to work quickly so that your paint can still be wet and get a little blend still to kind of keep things blurry and out of focus. If you need to keep your paint wet longer, you can add a slow drying medium to your paint. I think you can buy those at art stores. Um, I usually just work quickly. <laughs> if you apply a thicker layer of paint for that base layer that will also make it dry more slowly if the thicker the paint the longer it takes to dry all right and that's looking pretty nice for my blurry background now i can start to add some branches so we're going to take that uh, burnt sienna and some of our ultramarine blue and some white and some of our raw umber and I'll take some red and some ochre. <laughs> Why not? Let's just add all these colors. And now we can start to make some little lines back here, kind of making the shape of branches. You don't want to go too dark with your branch color yet. See how mine's just a little darker than that background color. And I'm just holding the brush like this so I can get that nice thin line very gently pressing on the canvas. 
Take a little more umber. Let's see, we got one right here. Basically, wherever you have your uh, branches, there probably are going to be some stems in there too. Wherever you have your leaves, you're probably going to have some stems. Got a little umber and some of my green there again. Things are starting to get a little more crisp. You can dip your brush in the water if you want to thin it down and then you can pat that on your napkin and kind of smooth it out a bit if you want it to stay fuzzy. If you want it to get more in focus then you want to keep those solid edges. All right, and then let's start to get some more detailed branches here. So let's take our umber, our sienna, and some purple or violet, and that light blue violet color, a little ultramarine. And let's do a little more sienna. Now we can do one kind of coming off right here. And now this is getting a little bit more in focus. And we've got one right here. This one's just my uh, my burnt umber, my my raw umber, my sienna, my violet, my blue, and a little bit of white. And this one's gonna go right here. I'm gonna need more yellow. Let's add some ochre to that. There we go. And you don't want to make your sticks be like perfectly straight jagged lines. You want them to have like a little bit of curve, have a couple little branches coming off of each one. They don't have to be perfect. The more imperfect they are with like kind of fuzzy organic lines, the more realistic they're going to look. If you keep them really stiff, they're going to look a little bit less realistic. Okay, we got a big one right here. Kind of comes out to there. So this is your halfway point. That's about where it comes out. Grab some violet. This is a nice crisp line. And you can kind of fuzz up that line like I mentioned before to make it look a little more natural. Okay, let's grab some more violet, umber, and blue, and our ochre. Add another one right here. These ones kind of separate and make a little V here. And we'll take some black, just darken up the bottom of that one. Let that blend up into the other colors a little bit. All right, we've got another darker one down here. It's a little thinner.
There's one right here. Lots of branches. You don't have to add this many branches if you don't want to. Okay, and we need a branch to this. I guess we have this one right here, kind of. Mm -hmm. Let's make this one go right there. And this one right here. Okay, let's see. This guy actually comes right here. Let's make that branch all connect to this one. There we go. So this branch is important, and this branch is important because we're going to have a little bird here and a little bird right here. We got a couple more little ones. And then let's put that brush in the water and we'll switch to our kind of soft top tip brush there. And we're just gonna take some white and a little tiny bit of that sky blue color, blend those together. And then we're gonna start to add like some snow in the background and it's kind of fuzzy. So you wanna blend it a little bit. Got some over here on top of these snowy things. So I'm taking the extra paint off my brush, starting to blend it by just kind of pushing into the canvas and letting that white do its thing, get blended in. A little bit more, just kind of filling this in in between these branches. And I'm just fuzzing that out, taking the extra paint off my brush. Just kind of going around the edges there a little bit. Over here, we got a lot of white. start to sketch in our little birds and then we can get more of the detail going next. So let's see for the bird. Let's start with this little flat tipped brush here. We're going to add one right here. And we start with the black, just taking pure black there and going to add the bird's shape. So he's got a head. Oh, 
He's kind of looking down. Maybe he's munching on something. So the shape of the bird is going to be the trickiest part. I guess if we think about it this way, we've got like this circle and then there's like a triangle here. And then we've got another big, he's got a big tummy. He's got a big tummy circle like right here. <laughs> so we've got a circle, a triangle, and a circle rectangular type of shape. And then we've got a rectangle sticking out from the bum <laughs> for his tail. And then that wing kind of comes in right, right about there. So there's like the general shape of that bird. Now that we got the shape, we can start to fill in more of the color. Got some ochre with a little bit of umber and white and some red. Let's do a little more white, like right in this area, right under the wing. Take some more ochre and white. Start to brighten that up a little bit. We'll add that on this side. And we'll just take some white, like a little bit of that grayish brown color, a little bit of that sky blue. Add that right here. Take some white, get the tummy. Got some white on the wing. Motion detected at the back door. Oh, we also got some gray and black. And then for the beak, let's just take some of that Indian yellow. So the Indian yellow actually, uh, once you start blending it, it does actually work like the other Indian yellows. It just doesn't look like it on the palette. All right, we got this little beak right here. And he's got a little black lid on top of his beak. Good. And just put a little black right there for the eye. Okay, so we got that basic shape for that bird. I'm going to touch up this branch that goes in front of him. So 
So he's like perched on the branch. Gonna add a little bit of sienna and white there, get a little highlight. His little claws are on this branch like this, it's cute. All right, so there's our one bird. And then we've got another one. We're gonna put him right here on this one. So again, let's sketch out the body. Give a nice little space for the head here. Head's got like a mound. So you got the circle and then this triangle. Gonna look more like that. And then for the rest of the body, just kind of like a piece of watermelon. <laughs> and then it comes out like this for the tail. We got that little shape. And then we got that for the wing. And let me just make this come a little closer there. Touch up the spot right there. And his tummy too big. And there's our bird right there. He's kind of resting on that branch. So now we can fill in this bird's head. It's colors on its head and body. It's got some white right there. Then we got our ochre. Take a little more white for the underbelly part. And we got some more black for the swing here. And for the little tail. So cute. A little bit of white. And there's like a gray section about right there. And then let's just make one adjustment here. I messed up the shape a little bit, so I'm just gonna take some white and a tiny little bit of that background color, and we'll just go over that. Little mistake that I made. And then we just can just make it that background color come right back, kind of carry that out. So very easy to fix mistakes with acrylic paints. All right, and then we'll make that beak again. Just a little beak coming out right where that little white spot is on the face. All right, so I got the bird sketched in. I'm gonna let the birds dry and I'm going to work on these trees a little bit more. I think I'm gonna brighten up the background a little bit more first actually. I'm gonna take some more white. So I'm just gonna get all that paint off of my brush. Grab some white paint. And we'll just start to add a little more snow in the background, kind of fuzzing that. Making these layers, just brightening things up. Making them a little fuzzy. making little swirls uh, at the edges to fuzz it up and pressing harder into the canvas. I'm 
Now we're just layering up this white to make it look like we have more snow in the background. Alright, it's looking nice. We're just going to keep working with lots of layering and that's going to build up this really nice little scene. So I'm just going over that snow again, making it a little bit more opaque, a little more white. Some of these spots, adding like that more snow just in some spots on top so it starts to look like little highlights. looking good. Now we're going to go back to those greens we were working with. So we're going to take our Prussian green, violet, our sienna, and ultramarine blue. And there's a little white that's on my brush here. Let's take a little sap green as well. And some more white. And more sap green. <laughs> Maybe a little more blue. There we go. All right, and then we can start to like make it look like we've got a couple little branches. That don't have snow or they're underneath the snow. I'm gonna switch to this brush here. Keep working on that. Take a little of the yellow. Add some more behind this bird. And we'll take some more of our sap green and ultramarine. A straight line and then just do a bunch kind of coming right off of that. Adding these in a couple little spots. Can add some more highlights. Let's take some more yellow and white. Just add highlights on top of a couple of these needles. Just adding these like kind of all over the place, trying to get a good little balance.
Alrighty, and now we can start working more on the branches. So let's make some highlights on this branches. Going to mix some sienna with some violet and some of our blue with some ochre and some white. And let's do a little green too, a little Prussian green. I did a little too much Prussian green. <laughs> there we go. A little more purple. Alrighty, good. Let's work on this one here. So we're gonna just kind of make these rings that come around, like following the path, like as if they were gonna follow all the way over. It's just an arc shape. It just keeps going all the way. Just keep that going all the way around. I don't have one on here too. Same thing, just start it there and make it go like kind of an arc. You're making like a circle, but you're picking up the brush for the bottom part of your circle. Okay, now this one's more in shadow, so you want your circle to start at the base, kind of work its way up. Only doing part of the circle. This is where we've got more light. Okay. Take a little more white and our green and ochre and this one's going to go like this same way. And then back here, let's take a little more green. This one's kind of going to go right here where I put that shadow before it's actually a little brighter down there. Now I can put some of the lichen on these trees. So we'll take a little bit of our sienna, white, just start to add a couple of random little like blotches of things. Got a highlight up on this side too. I'm gonna take some of my umber and my blue and my violet. Just darken this one again on this side. Take some black. Start to add a couple little nubs and things like that on the tree. Just add a couple little circles for little uh, dings in the tree and lines. That one's just really dark. And you can water down your brush a little bit and start to add a couple more little 
branches if you'd like. some more of those shadows and little kinks in the wood. Knots, stuff like that. Just stuff to kind of tie together these highlights and shadows is what we need. these two and make this one branch. And down here we'll do a little sky blue, a little highlight. And we'll do some violet. And we could start to like add another one here, just pretend like something else is kind of coming off of there. All right, one more black. Just want to keep going until you find like a good level of balance between highlights and shadows. Like you don't want one section like this feels really dark right now. You don't want one thing to be too dark. You want to have a good balance. This needs a little highlight around it maybe. Add a couple more little highlights there. And on this one, let's take some sienna. Just connect that there. Can even put like a darker shadow there again. We can add some snow onto these branches. Take some white with a little bit of this light blue and we'll just kind of throw it on there just right at the tops. That's just a little too much down here, so we'll just touch that up. Easy fix. All right, so that's looking pretty nice. I think maybe, yeah, the birds are dry enough to 
finish up the little birds. So we're going to make these birds stand out more by fixing up this white. So just make sure you get the shape of the birds close to accurate because that's how we make this look realistic with the birds. It's just getting the shape of the birds right. I think I made this guy's belly a little too big too. Brightening up all these colors on the bird. Let's get some white and some ultramarine. It's good like underside color for this gray tail. And take some more black and just kind of go over that a little bit, touch up, touch up the tail. And let's touch up the black on the wing. I'm going to take some violet and red and black and just kind of start to make a few more lines on these trees. I think that just brings it to life a little more. Add a little shadow right there from the tree. Just fixing up the shape of this bird a little more. Take some of the background color. some of our ochre, green and white. Get some more red.
some black. Just want to use like a good variety in your tree highlight colors. just to make the head have a little bit more variation from the body. Alright, almost done, a little bit more. Got these feathers here that we can see. All right, guys, I think let's call that a finished painting. I got a little detailed with the branches, but I could have taken it even farther, I believe. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with the level of detail. You definitely still have a sense of depth with those smaller branches in the background and things getting fuzzier as they fade off into the distance as well. And then this one bird on the branch right up in front of us is just munching on something. And then the other birds just sitting ever so peacefully. <laughs> so this was a nice one to paint. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you recreate this one, you can post it on your Instagram. And if you do that, then just tag me on my Instagram page, The Painting Stoop, so I can see your work. And if you have any requests or recommendations for future painting tutorials, leave a comment below. Or you could also send me a message with a reference photograph on Instagram of something that you'd like me to turn into a painting tutorial. So thanks guys, have a great day, and happy painting. Bye-bye.